went to Paris Studios the other day. That was fun. Um, ended up going to one of their bigger pro rooms with the free decks. Um, ended up testing the Pioneer DJ AM, what DJ AM, whatever they are, three thousands, right? The new ones with the big screens. Wow, what an experience! Um, fairly slick, fairly um, what do they think called slick or slippery sort of feeling towards them. You kind of have to get used to the overall feel of the jog wheel. There's something changed in the weight of the jog wheel and how it feels to touch. It's a bit odd to get used to. The touch screen is really big, like surprisingly really really big something that i didn't really take any notice of when i was watching some of the reviews on youtube so that was something to get used to probably distractingly big too i think there's probably a little bit too much going on in the screen overall you can touch it um and all that malarkey so i think it kind of takes away from the idea of just focusing on being able to kind of put together cohesive mixes that kind of you know tell a story that are able to kind of take the crowd on the journey there's just too much entertainment going on in that thing for my liking if i have to be honest for my liking too much entertainment but um, a decent little system, decent little room. It kind of reminded me a little bit of um, Plastic Peoples, the DJ Pro room in um, Paris Studios. It definitely did remind me of it. The prices are still astronomical considering what they started out at. And um, I have a feeling, especially now with the world reopening and people be able to go to actual clubs, like the amount of people that are actually going to be going to Pirate Studios day to day is definitely going to decrease, or if it hasn't decreased already, judging by the amount of promo emails I've been getting lately, <laughs> it definitely feels like Pirate Studios appeal overall has been dwindling somewhat. And it's a shame, really, because like I said in the beginning, it felt really raw and kind of undergroundy type thing obviously it's kind of built up and popular over time but then even stuff like the newsletters and the emails you used to get from them were really informative super funny stuff like the one of the only newsletters legitimately that i had actually opened right most of them i kind of ignore apart from like maybe ryan holiday's book recommendations right the guy that read the obstacles away um he's got a really good um email list that he kind of puts through a kind of books that he's reading month by month that's something i always kind of keep an eye on tim ferris has a really good one called five bullet fridays i think to point together loads of interesting links and stuff that he's found online for products whatever else, for you know self-optimization products whatnot but the pirate ones are really good great kind of you know all round information on stuff that's going on in electronic music and stuff that's going on in djing stuff that's going on in events and all that malarkey really really good and then over time something changed something changed about the tone and about the content of it just got a bit crap and now over the last few months they've quietly and covertly hiked up the prices on all the rooms and there was no announcement and usually they would announce anything right they would announce that they changed the color of the flipping walls in their studios and as soon as the prices went up in all the studios no announcement no nothing just complete radio silence and they just put it up quietly in the background and it's a really bad move if you think about it because obviously now with the world reopening if anything the price is being higher is going to prevent more people from going but then obviously in their side of things i understand it kind of because they've been really ramping up the kind of overall uh launching of their studios over the world right loads have been popping up all over the place so they've obviously clearly needed to pay for them they've got obviously cdj 3000s that i played on the, the other day so you know and those have to be paid for as well i'm sure they probably hired a few more staff that has to be paid for right everything has to be paid for so at the end it generally comes down to the customers having to kind of fork out whatever it is you know make that difference up and that's the only disappointing part of it it's like it's so expensive i think for the time that we're in there it must have cost i think around eight quid for around like a six hour set or something and back before then i think it was maybe half no we'll say half of that it may have been 60 right because i think now the prices of the room per hour have gone up double or yeah gone up double so if it's 10 pound it was five pound before which makes a big difference if you're going to record like a longer set if you're going to do like a, a live stream it really does kind of change how you kind of interact with that space and i was using it a lot of it to do loads of live streams you've probably seen on my channel I had a lot of live streams before and they kind of obviously drived up over the time because it's just too expensive to go there kind of like on a week on week basis you're having to spend like you know 40 quid basically there and back not including an uber or whatever it may be so it's only fortunate that the one I live the one that's near me is sort of like a half an hour walk so I can figuratively walk there but it's still you know it's still a half an hour walk it's still like a three mile sort of bop to get to the DJ spot thing so which is a bit excessive what three miles maybe two and a half miles a bit excessive if you think about it so that's one of the only disappointing things about it but the pro room's decent it's a really nice vibe it's an easy you can imagine throwing yourself like a little party in there to be honest it's a really really good sort of like space overall but it's just a shame that you know 
the price had to be so high and they had to kind of fuck up a really really good thing but you know i guess you have to kind of try to account for some of the expenses that they've been making on their side but i think that was a real real kind of dropping of the ball on their part in that regards but you know i guess it is what it is i guess they're going to end up feeling the pain of it or not depending when the world reopens but i have a feeling a lot of people are probably going to maybe it's a maybe it's just twofold maybe it's twofold maybe people will end up moving away from going to clubs and decide you know what i just i actually do enjoy just hearing this stuff loud and playing with myself and my friends having a couple of drinks because it's obviously fed far cheaper to go and book yourself like a little session at pirate than to go to an actual nightclub right obviously it's not the same but it's just like it's actually cheaper if you just want to experience playing the music yourself and i'm sure there's some freaks that exist out there who just would just download an album because i'd imagine i would sometimes do that if i didn't have the if i didn't have a system at home or good headphones i might just download an album or an ep i went to listen to or a set and just play it on that system right just listen to it right maybe with your eyes closed a couple of drinks whatever chilling out with your friends it could be an actual good vibe so i can see people maybe interacting with that space in that way but something tells me with everything reopening up in the world going back to normal these sort of spaces are going especially again with the price increase it's they're definitely going to see some level of they're going to definitely see a dip in some of the traction going on and around them and again I'd, I'd imagine a lot of the people that went there were like myself you know people that are kind of you know uh what do you say um that want to be um you know professionals in the industry who are kind of using those sort of spaces as opposed to like general pundit punters like general public people right i don't really think your average show the person your average guy on the street is you know running to a pirate studio it's mostly people that want to be involved in the industry or work in the industry you know in that sort of capacity and there's not really a lot of people that do that right it's a quite a small pool um or, it's, or even if it's a big pool there's only a certain number of them right it maxes out a certain amount so there's only so many times you can dip into that pool at the same you know point so and judging by again judging by the frequency of their promo emails and the uh, referral scheme they got at the moment it definitely feels like they're definitely hurting for people to come in there but again like i said if you don't have a place to go and mix <clears throat> and you want to learn or you just want to just fall around and use some really good equipment because you know especially if you're starting out or you're playing at a level that i'm playing at in bars and pubs around east london the equipment you're going to be playing on is going to be terrible so if you want to actually feel what it feels like to play on actually good you know club ready equipment then go there it might not be the best thing to learn them because i think once you go to an actual you know i don't think there's a club i've been to that i played in at my level which is kind of like you know getting paid anywhere between like 50 to 150 quid a set there's not there's not one place i've ever been to where all the equipment was working like spotless it's always something wrong whether or not it's a couple of knobs missing if certain channels not working the cdjs themselves are sticky and they don't move properly like there's always something wrong the subwoofer doesn't work no monitors something it's always something so you know to, to try and practice on a set of three thousands at pirate and then try and get yourself booked in the pub and then we'll rock up there and find out that they've got a pair of cdj what 400 or something that don't have a dj link cable and you have to bring two different usbs or you know <laughs> it's probably not the best idea you're probably better off just like you know buying a controller and trying to learn off that you know and just keeping the waveforms kind of blocked on your or disabled on your screen and learning that way i think probably is the best way to go forward but hey what can you do